Hey game designers, this is a Toro 11 of Game Fruit. Um, it's going to be a relatively quick one, not much to learn in this one, but we're basically going to finish up all of the assets inside of Game Fruit. So let's go ahead and um, let's do this quick one. Um, the first thing we're going to cover is damage assets. So if you scroll down, we did doors, checkpoints, endpoints, NPCs, miscellaneous. You will see here some damage um, assets. So let's just go ahead and look at our layers here and let's see if we can find a layer where we have damageables, things that can damage us. Okay, and what layer we want to put it. So I'm looking, I'm looking, and I don't really see a layer that um, that looks like damageable. So let's go ahead and add a layer. We're going to click on a new layer here and we're gonna click on rename and I'm just gonna call it damage. Um, damage, I guess, obstacles. Okay. And um, let's go ahead and put this. Um, so if you imagine some of these damage obstacles, if, for example, this fire and this um, buzzsaw, which I'm going to use right now. So I'm going to grab the buzzsaw right here. I just put it right on top of the heart. And let's go ahead and put the uh, fire um, over here. Or actually, I don't want to drag both. Let's just grab one of them. And you can see right now it's being in front of the heart. And I don't think that was what it's intended, right? So when you think about the interaction between the player and the buzzsaw, if I jump into the buzzsaw, it might look like I'm more inside of it if I stand behind it versus in front of it. But I definitely don't want it in front of the UI layer or the victory point layers. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag this um, over and put it uh, in front of player. Okay, and maybe this is a good decision about what my collectible should be. Should my collectibles be above player or not? So maybe I'll put the collectibles and drag it above um, the damage ones. So I don't know, something like that. Okay, and the order, like again, doesn't matter. Um, it's kind of up to you. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and select this object, and I'm gonna move it above something like that. Okay. All right. So if I jump into this, let's go ahead and hit play and see what these damageable items do. Okay, so if I get the heart, but it costs me to jump on this thing, I will shred up and die. Okay, so um, you can go ahead and click on this object and you can see that it only has really two properties that you want to change. Um, the hazard tag, that's definitely something you don't want to touch. That's how uh, the player communicates with this thing to let it know that this thing does damage to me. It has a damage amount you can change. You can also have a delay between blows. So 250 milliseconds is equivalent to one fourth of a second. So think about this as it does 10 damage every one fourth of a second and rather it's active or not active. Let's talk about instant death. Um, instant death is very similar to damage obstacles. So I'm going to leave it in the same layer. And this one, unlike the uh, damage one, if you touch it, you die. So I'm just going to stick it, I don't know, um, uh, behind me somewhere here. And if I touch it, um, it has the hazard tag, it's active. If I touch it, I instantly die. Let's go ahead and test that that works. So here I'm damaged. I'm getting a coin. Oh, I teleported away. But if I jump back into here, I will instantly die. Okay. And instantly die. Okay. All right. So nothing too big about that. That's pretty uh, easy stuff. Let's go ahead and talk about story point. So story points are basically what you guys already see inside the game uh, default scene. When you go over it, it tells you a story. So let's go ahead and put one over here. Um, let's go ahead and check out what layer we might put it in. We already have a layer for story points here. So I'm going to highlight story points. I'm going to drag and drop a story point here. And the story point has a couple properties that we can change. We can change the background color. So if the background color is black. We can change the font size. 16 we can type in a message we can make it permanent or not permanent so permanent means that this thing will always be here so i can come back and retouch the same story point if i turn it off it becomes consumed and disappears after the player touches it the very first time so and then the player tag you're not going to change that that's who can touch the um, story point the text color this is going to be a white color on top of black background so that looks good so the only thing that we're going to test right now is go ahead and change the message so say if the player touches that um, that 
story point is going to say you come you see a secret layer in the distance right so let's go ahead and test it out go ahead and hit play and i'm going to go touch this and it says you see a secret uh, i'll say secret layer in the distance right and we also see that um, it does not get consumed because it's permanent you will see it, it will activate, it would not activate when you stop touching it and reactivate when you touch it again. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off just for testing purposes, the permanent status here. So maybe you decide that this story point is a one time deal and the player better see it uh, or never see it again. So I cl click on this, you see a secret layer in the distance and then you never see that again. So um, it is also possible to make and attach that secret layer uh, um, script on something that's invisible. So let's say you just go here, you don't actually see the question mark, but if you manage to get onto this square, it will say the secret layer is in the distance. So you can actually make this object a blank empty object with nothing there, and it's like invisible and transparent, and that will work as well, okay? And the last thing we're going to cover is weapon. So it's really easy. A weapon for the player is not like the NPCs. The NPCs start out with the weapon. For a player, the player has to acquire the weapon first. So um, let's go ahead and put uh, the weapon in the collectibles layer because you have to collect the weapon first before you can have the weapon. Okay. And let's go ahead and see if we hit play, if we can collect the weapon and then use it. Okay. And if I grab the weapon, you will see now that I become equipped with the weapon. And to activate the weapon, it is spacebar. So now we can shoot as well. And like the um, the NPCs, you have stats on the weapon. So you can change how it fires, how slowly it fires, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and show you real quickly. So the um, if you look at the weapon itself, it only has a bullet tag, a player tag, gun auto fire, gun burst, muzzle velocity, gunshot duration, and some other stats here. So, for example, let's say I want to do a triple burst fire. I want to change that number to three. And let's say that I want to shoot in quicker intervals. It looks more like a machine gun. I will go 50 millisecond intervals. Let's say I want my bullets to travel faster. I can make it 1,000. I can make reload time quicker. So you can play around with these numbers and try to figure out uh, how fast you want to do it. A gunshot duration is one second. I'll make that maybe half a second. So go ahead and hit run and play test with this weapon and kind of get uh, how you want this to look. So now I have a much more faster shooting bullet. I click once, it shoots three times, and it shoots much faster. So now bam, 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 bam and I feel like I'm pretty powerful, right? So you can play around the numbers and figure out what you do. Um, I think there's even an auto fire option. Let's go and see if that option is still here. Yep, gun auto fire. So if you click on auto fire and hit play, your ammo will continually fire. So let's go ahead and grab the weapon. And if you hit space, it's supposed to auto fire. I don't know if that's me holding down space. No, it's not auto firing. Hmm. So it looks like that script doesn't work. Um, I don't know how to explain why, but um, so again, not all these scripts will work the way you intended. Maybe there's something else. Maybe we changed the numbers and gun auto fire can't work, but um, that's it for this video, guys. Really short and sweet, but we basically have covered everything here from moving tiles, HUDs, um, bullets, weapons, liquid fire or liquid tiles, backgrounds, teleporters, switches, story points, instant death, damage, these miscellaneous objects that don't do anything, NPCs, endpoints, checkpoints, doors, keys, life collectibles, health collectibles. We have literally covered everything here. Okay. So um, I'll see you guys next video.